Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Kitchen time. Um, this is not what I would class as an essential repot. It's a Roger's board repot. There's nothing to do in the grow room today. The weather is miserable and dull, so the lights are on in the grow room during the day rather than merely extending the day. Now, we did take this out of the pot a while ago, and it is a little surprising. Um, so, not a surprise today, or at least not for me, but that's how this arrived. So it arrived in what looked like a normal pot, but it's just been stuck inside of another one. Um, and a lot of these roots are out through this mesh of the basket. And some eagle-eyed viewer, I forget who, when we were looking at this last time, spotted that. There's a tiny little new growth there and it's just about poking through the mesh of the pot. Now, if, if that hadn't been pointed out to me I may not have noticed it and as soon as I yank this out of the pot it would probably have broken that off. So now I'm aware of it I can be a little more cautious so we say. But first job really is to get it out of the pot Now I'm hoping I can push that, yes I can, away from the hole and then ease it up. Now although this looks like it's attached to this basket, it's not. These roots are just poking through the holes, so they're not a big deal. They will just unthread. Some may get left behind, but it won't be many. Now I can hear a few clicks, but not enough to worry about. Now you can see what the problem is. That's potted far too deep, and the consequences are There could be some rotting around the base here, which I will have to investigate. Now this is a large plant. It's all squashed up. Um, it hasn't had room. Look, look how deep these bulbs are. This has been very badly potted. Um, anyway, this sun um, fibrous cocoa fiber stuff, the one good thing about it is it comes off easy and doesn't damage your roots taking it off. And quite honestly, the easiest way to do it is run it under the tap. But I think I may have some potential rotting around the base here, so we might end up with more than one plant trying to get at those parts and separate them out. It'll be a shame if I have to do that, but nonetheless, um, it would easily make, you could split that into three plants easily, and each plant would have more than enough bulbs to survive. Um, if you chose to do so. Um, I haven't made, made up my mind. Luckily this part of the plant round here was right up against that basket with no media which means that part probably hasn't got any rotting but I can see some signs in here that I'm not too happy with. Hopefully it's nothing more than the external sheaves and the bulbs haven't started to go yet. But I'll get it under the tap, get all this fibrous stuff off, and um, then we'll have a think about what we're going to do with it. But it's a lopsided plant. If you look at these large bulbs over here, they're at that height, if you think of that as the base of the plant. Yeah? And all of these are below that area. But over here, we've got a lot of tiny little bulbs that are leafless. I mean, that doesn't even look as though it's attached to me. Now, it could, have be, could be because the rhizome's rotted. This could be several small plants all squashed together to make it look like a mature plant. But until I get it washed off and separate the uh, roots, yeah, I can see bits moving. I've got a feeling this is quite, could even be three or four plants. Anyway, I'll give it a clean off and then I'll be back. Okay, quick chat. Um, it's very loose and the chances are quite a few of these bulbs are not necessarily attached via a rhizome and I think there's four plants there of various sizes I mean there's one there obviously that's, that's just two bulbs so I think what's happened is this has just been squashed into the tightest place possible um, as the parts of the plants were coming into bloom and then you can sell what looks like a nice mature plant. I mean, there's another piece there. I mean, that, that's just hanging off. 
I don't believe that's attached very well. And, and this little bit here, and, and yet that little bit there has got a new growth coming, you know, so um, if I pop that, and it says new growth on that bit down there, there's new growth showing in many places. Um, what to do and also once you start looking closely at this plant it's had a hard life look how many leaves have been cut look how many leaves have had their ends cut off now that was to make it look pretty which means those leaves all had brown tips probably look it's almost half of the leaves have been cut had their ends cut so it obviously has had harder times than the first look because at first sight that looks a nice good green a nice healthy plant but when you start really looking at it it, it hasn't been and that may be because there was so little media in there it was dehydrating and um, the tips of the leaves were going but I'd have expected a different type of damage if it was uh, due to dehydration could have been overfed all sorts of things um, I really don't know what to do with this. If I split it, I will get quite a few plants. And I think there's, as I said, there's, there's at least four. And then I'd end up with lots of little ones. Now I've got those whether I like it or not, because if they're not truly joined by the rhizome, then um, they are separate. Whether the roots are holding them together or not, they are separate plants. You know, sometimes you have to step back. What's it called? Thinking outside the box. I'll be back. I've always said, no matter what the problem, there's always an answer to the question. Sometimes you have to change the question to get the answer you want. <laughs> it's called cheating. But I've decided that due to this looseness of the plant and not knowing for certain whether those bulbs are attached or not, I mean, they could just be hanging together by a very, very wobbly rhizome, or they could only be held together because of the tangle of the roots. But either way, if I separate it and get it wrong, I've got lots of small plants that, may, that would have probably done better staying as a unit and supporting each other's, you know. Um, and it would be a risk. So I've decided that even if that is separate plants, I want to keep them together as a unit. And um, one of my other twinkles has done very well mounted. Don't get me wrong, the ones in the pots are also doing very well. But um, they do look rather nice mounted because they're never going to get huge. You know, so they don't take up loads of space. And I'm not that good with the shelf space. I am getting a bit thin on the ground, such that some of my plants are probably going to have to go again this year to make not room for more plants, but room for the ones I've got to, la to allow them to have some space and get bigger. You know, that, that's hopefully what our plants do. They get bigger. And when they get bigger, they take up more space. And that's if you don't buy any new ones. So um, I've got plenty of hanging space. I'm certainly not short of that although it is a little bit <clears throat> not configured well at the moment to allow for the lights. Um, but, you know, so what is it now? I suppose end of March. Yeah, we're probably only looking at six more weeks and those lights can come down and then my hanging shelves, my racks, can start getting moved around and put into better places, shall we say. So this is going to be fun. Um, because of its looseness, um, I can shape it. I can shape it into long and thin if I want, or short and fat. But either way, I need to make sure that it is secure on the mount. Um, one tip if you're going to do a mount that hasn't got a hook on it, put the hook on it before you put the plant on it. And decide how you want your mount to look. I'm not too keen on the diamond shape, although it does work. You know, it allows for expansion in four directions. Some plants grow upwards naturally. 
some spread out sideways. Um, but just just look and see, see how you think you'd like that mount to look and then put the plant on it and it'll look totally different and you'll change your mind and think eh, it might have been better up that way but once the plant's on there it's um, not always easy to change your mind um, well I think the plant is wider than it is long I think that's the best expression I can use God, do you know what, I thought I'd seen a bug then that's a seed of some sort wedged in there. Could be a cork bark tree seed. Um, <laughs> whatever it is, I don't want it germinating. Um, yeah, as the plant is probably wider and is more susceptible to growing upwards rather than outwards, I think we'll have the widest part of the bottom, so I need my hook about there. And also, before you put your hook in, find its balancing point. Yeah, you don't want it to tip over sideways. I mean obviously with a squarish shape the balancing point is in the middle. And then however you make your hole, make sure you make it in the bark and not in your hand. Yeah? It's quite important. Now I just need to get my other screwdriver. Because this, this screwdriver has got a sharpened blade so it makes holes very easy but it doesn't make them quite big enough for the wire to go through nicely so I put a crosshead screwdriver through and the twisting motion like works like a little drill cuts a hole I mean this cork bark is very soft it's you know there's nothing uh, hard about it but it's just to get a, a hole that the wire is going to go through without me having to cuss and swear <laughs> we don't want that on video do we and I don't like bleeping out bits of my videos. It takes too long to edit them. So it's better not to put it in there in the first place. Right, let's get my wire through. Now all I do, I just have a single hole for my hooks. It's, um, it's always done okay for me. And I put the long bit over the top, yeah? So that it sticks out the back. And then the short bit goes over the top and forms a loop. And then I just pinch that tight with the pliers, which I haven't got, so I'll do it in a minute. And then that becomes the hook. It works quite nicely. Don't know how long I want that hook yet. I don't make the decision for the length of the hook until the plant's on there. Yeah? Because if I have a really short diddy hook, sometimes I want to put the mount quite near the roof, and then the leaves are actually touching the roof, so a longer hook's better. Um, but I always make the decision after I put the plant on. Now comes the fun bit. Under normal circumstances, I always say put the plant on and put the moss on top. Then if you need to replace the moss, it's easy to tease it off. But I am gonna put a little bit underneath because I've got some very deep crevices here. Ow, there's a thorn in there somewhere. Never mind. Gnarly old hands, it didn't break through. So we haven't got the red stuff. We haven't got people passing out all over the place. But these deep crevices are gonna to have to have some moss in there. Otherwise roots are gonna be in nothing out of the back of the plant. Now obviously new roots will grow onto the mount and attach and they, they'll love those crevices, but the existing roots might not attach because a lot of them will have stopped growing they'll have lost their growing tip, they've done their job. Roots don't grow forever. A lot of people worry about seeing their roots stop growing. They don't grow forever. If they did, they'd be eight foot long, wouldn't they? There obviously comes a point where the root has reached its maximum size and it stops growing at that point. Now, this is not gonna be easy. I did get some fishing line. I'm gonna try it with fishing line I just got a horrible feeling it might be better to wire it on initially. This is quite a large plant. I want it to grow slightly outwards. I don't want it bolt upright. It won't look right and new growths will come out against the mount. So I want it slightly tilted about like that so that it's sort of hanging. Uh, if I put a wire over that, it's going to bite in. Whereas if I put 
quite a few strands of fishing line. It'll hold it without having to pull too tight. Um, covered by multiple loops rather than several tight ones, if you see what I mean. But I'm going to need a lot. I'm going to need to go round a lot of times. So this is another thing that can generate language, is trying to work with a piece of uh, fishing line that's far too long. Let's <laughs> keep getting tangled up. But uh, We'll see what we can do. And a lot of these loops are going to go multiple ways. It's going to crisscross, because it needs to, because it's a loose plant. But we'll uh, get a loop round the mount to start with, and uh, make sure I've got a long enough end to tie some it to later on. Save that bit for Ron, later on. That's what, you, that's what you always say when somebody offers you a cigarette. You take one, and then you take another one. You say, what are you doing? Oh, that's for Arthur. Arthur who? Arthur this one. Noose. <laughs> Makes it sound like I'm going to actually hang it, doesn't it? Well, I am. It's a very concave back on this, so all of my loops are going to be hanging in thin air. So I want to make sure I've got something to be able to tie onto when I've finished winding. Right, now let's see what we can do. I'm going to put a couple of... So of course the next decision is where is the most of the, most of the new growth going to come from? It's so difficult. But I think this is the older part of the plant with the smaller bulbs. Either that or the plant's deteriorated and the bulbs have got smaller. It's more logical that this is the older part of the plant and yet we do have some signs of new growth. So some new growths are going to come out from here. But I suspect, yeah, we've also got new growth around the other side. And I've got some older leafless bulbs that I'm not going to take off on the grounds I'm not sure what they're attached to and if they're attached to a small piece of plant they're important if they're attached to a single unit if this one if this was then they're not so important the older leafless bulbs are a storage function but if there's too many of them compared with the new ones you can start draining the plant because the plant doesn't know any better and it will spread its reserves around everything it's got. So it's pushing energy and stuff into bulbs that have served their purpose, so they're better off than on. But on this one, I, I'm still not sure whether it's a single unit or not. Anyway, let's try and get something around it to at least keep it in place while I uh, think about where I'm gonna go. And the first job is to get through the middle, about halfway up somewhere about there. That's not cut across any bulbs at all, it's gone in between, but it's a reasonable point to hold the bottom of the plant in place. And then I think I need to do something very similar near the top. Trying to find a pathway through is not going to be easy there. So I'm trying to find... Um, Oncidium pseudobulbs are egg-shaped, so they have a Looking at them as a profile, they have a narrow side and a fat side. And obviously going through the gaps where the narrow bits are, that's not bad. That's got it already and that's only two loops. Um, because I don't want that to wobble about, I'm going to tie it off now, but I'm not going to cut the end. I'm just going to tie it off simply because while I'm messing about with the... Um, Sorry, with the moss, distracted there. <laughs> um, while I'm messing about putting the moss on, it's possible these loops could come loose. So if I tie it now, th those first two loops that are holding the plant in place can't move. I don't normally do that. I don't normally have a need to do it. But um, I think this time it might be better to be safe than sorry and hold what I've got in place. And we'll come back and uh, tie the moss on. Good job I had a nice long end because I've now got a tie twice. Right. Now we can turn it over and get some moss on the top. And the first place is there, round the back. Yeah? 
would love that to be a little bit lower on there. But we've got new growth coming out here. I, th I think it's going to spread in all directions, quite honestly. So let's get some moss around the top. Let's get my loose end out of the way so I don't bury it. <laughs> and then I get, my, get hold of my loose end and pull all the moss off. And then you have some language. This is a, this is a fiddly one. Um, this is not my normal mounting process because of the type of plant and its size. Um, I haven't got many Oncidiums mounted. I've got a couple of um, Miltonias, but when they were mounted, they were very small plants. They only had a couple of pseudo bulbs, so they were easy. And then my tiny twinkle that's in bloom at the moment, when that was mounted, that was quite a small plant. <laughs> so again, not too many pseudo bulbs to worry about. I think. Well, this is by far the largest Oncidium type that I've mounted. It's a long way off the largest mount I've ever done, by far. Um, when we get to the live broadcast tomorrow, I'll show you my largest mount, because part of the, the idea of the live broadcast tomorrow is because I can, I've got the camera in the doorway, I can get away from it. Which means I can get far enough away from it to show some plants that can never be filmed in their entirety because they're too big. And I just can't. <laughs> okay. Now I know in the centre of the plant there are some roots that would be left totally dry. So I am going to tuck a few little bits in the plant. I don't normally do that. But it's loose moss and it's not going to be enough or even close to enough to actually, and I don't need to do it, in, that's just that one place and that's because of that loose bit, yeah, because I've got a feeling that's not even attached. So we need to be careful we don't knock it off completely. And just make sure I've got plenty round the base, those new growths are going to come out soon, and as soon as their roots start, in the moss, through, onto the mount, and grab hold. And once a plant grabs hold, my experience says it grows faster and stronger and the sooner it attaches the better. So you've got to give it every chance possible to attach as soon as possible. Which is why I normally put the bare roots against the mount. Right, so the rest of this, hopefully I've got enough, he says, glancing at the floor, is just holding the moss on now. That's all it's doing. And holding it against the root base. I don't need to go mad here, but I think what I might have to do, and I am going to run out blast, um, is put one up this way so that it goes up that side of the plant to come round a bit more. And that will hold that moss around that side, and that's the last loop I'm going to get out of this, so it is too short. That doesn't happen with me often either. So we'll tie that off and get another piece. That's a bit of a nuisance and that doesn't happen with me more often, I usually end up with far too much. But um, this is relatively quite a large piece of wood and it's not so much its actual size, it's its thickness. That's what's causing the problem. It's the fact that it's not only having to go round the sides, it's having to go round the back. And this is a very thick piece of wood, so uh, bark rather. Right, so let's tie that off and get another piece and start again. Because that's certainly not enough to hold all the moss in place. Anywhere near it. And this time we'll have far too much. And chuck a bit away if necessary. Here's my little niche. There he is. So it's just a little nick in the edge of that um, spore, which effectively um, is very useful because it makes sure I know where the end is. <laughs> very useful, in fact. Right, so we need to start again now. I've just found a point where there's several bits sort of joined together, and that was a that was a good knot, wasn't it? It's an excellent knot, but it's not actually a loop. Come on, concentrate. More coffee. Right. That way round, dopey. That's better. I want to knot around my uh, piece, not, not alongside it. 
do a lot of good like that. Right, so that's that. Right, right where was the last loop? That was the one that came up the side. So what we haven't done yet is go around the back and hold that moss in place, which is the lot that goes across the top. So I need my loop to start quite low down and end up quite low down. That way it's pulling downwards on it. That's okay. And then I think what I might do now is the same on this side as I did the other side and put one up over the top to hold all that side down. Now I'm going to stop and have a look and see if I've missed any bits. I've got a piece down there, I've got two loops there, another loop up there, and one across the top. I reckon that's okay. But what I haven't done is thought about the plant. How secure is the plant? <laughs> the plant's actually fine. That only had two loops around it, didn't it? Well, fine or otherwise, it's going to get another one across the middle. Just in case. I'll go into the just in case category. Let's see if I can get the uh, stuff to hang on to something sensible. There's a nice path down through there and out through there. Just. That's good. And that goes right across the middle now. That's good. Right, that's it. It's in place. I don't think it's going to move, and I don't think the moss is all going to fall off. Ah. Now, all we've got to do is find somewhere to tie on to. Bear in mind, I've got two ends to work on this time instead of, instead of the normal one, um, and that'll do nicely there. Um, I'll show you a tip. Let me just get a knot in there to hold that last loop in place. Stop it going loose. He says, tying it the wrong way around. There we go. That's got it. Right. If you get lots of bits like that, there is a way of pulling them tighter. And, and it's just by looping round. So if I wanted to pull on that one, we'll just go round it. And give it a tug. Yeah and then go round somewhere else and pull on that. And then by pulling that, I've pulled both of those tighter. And then I could have a look down here, I could get hold of that one and give that one a bit of a tug. Yeah. All I'm doing is just firming it up. And it just helps hold things that little bit tighter. Yeah. And you just gotta make sure that you uh, the end that you want to tie off with hasn't just been tied off <laughs> in advance. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that'll do. I'm happy that that's going to stay put where it's been put and that I've just uh, helped tighten up the back a little bit to hold those loops a bit tighter. Not a lot. There is, there's no real stretchiness in fishing line, but it does have some give and that give can often end up with loose floppy loops. And a lot of that is just being careful and not trying to pull too tight. Right, so that's the back done. I'm not going to tie that tag on because I don't want that tag. Um, I've got a job to read the writing and it's all loose and floppy so I'll make a new one and put that on later. Uh, loose ends. Loose ends for me have to be looked after because I've got pussy cats, and fishing line on the floor looks like something exciting to play with. So if I've cut three pieces off, I want three pieces in the bin. Because uh, cats will get stuff in their mouth and end up swallowing it, and that's not a good idea. I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. And even if these bits are a bit loose, if they are even slightly attached to the rhizome, albeit a loose attachment, it stays as a single unit. And if they are detached and only held together with the roots, they'll still grow on, and eventually it'll look like one big plant, even if it isn't. So that's Oncidium Twinkle Red Fantasy. We won't be seeing any, any blooms on that for some time, but I don't think that's a setback for the plant. 
despite being a change of media, that cocoa fibre um, is capable of holding almost as much water as sphagnum moss. It is very water retentive. And that's a little bit why I'm not so keen on it in my environment. I've got a feeling if I grew in the home, I'd actually be using it. Yeah? Because I'd have higher temperatures more constantly. My plants would use their water quite a bit quicker than they do out in the grow room, certainly at this time of year. But that's its downside, is it, it can stay wet a very long time. And in the heat, that's a bonus. In the cold, it's a downside. I'm happy with that. Okay, so what was about to be a repot turned into a mount. Yeah, as I say, sometimes you just have to stand back have a coffee, walk outside, <laughs> talk to somebody else about something entirely different. As long as it's not football, of course. Right, I will leave it at that and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.